prophet Isaiah is oftentimes referred to as the messianic prophecy, prophet because of the fact that he spoke so much about the coming of the Christ. Uh, probably the best chapter on that we know about, and most familiar with, is chapter 53. But there's another chapter that's always been intriguing to me, and that's Isaiah chapter 11, where he talks at length about the coming of the Messiah and what it's going to be like. In verse 6, we find the statement, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion, and the fattening together, and the little child shall lead them. The first part of that talks about the peaceful nature of that kingdom that Christ will head up. It's not literally going to be a time when the wolf and the kid or the lion and the leopard and all those are going to be together in peace. But it's emphasizing the fact that it is a peaceable kingdom. Those animals which would naturally be considered to be enemies of one another are going to be at peace. And I think that has a reference to the peacefulness of the kingdom. That in God's kingdom, the church, we would have both Jew and Gentile living together in peace. The Gentiles often thought about the Jewish people as being those who were stubborn and obstinate, and they cared nothing for them. And the Jews felt like that toward the Gentiles. They believed that the Gentiles were those people who were pagan, worshippers of idols, and sometimes they were described as being nothing more than fuel for the fires of hell. And so there was that antagonism between them. But in the body of Christ, Christ would bring them both together, and they would be at peace in the church. Paul talks about how that Christ is the chief cornerstone, the cornerstone that joins two walls together. The wall of the Jews and that of the Gentiles being brought together in Christ at peace. And that's what it's going to be like in God's kingdom. But the part that really intrigues me here is the last line of that verse, when it says, a little child shall lead them. Now many people seem to think that's some kind of a contradiction because we know that Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 16 said, Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child. But what Solomon was talking about was having a king who acted childishly. And that's when there would be woe for that kingdom. And there's a big difference between a child and acting childishly. And I think that it talks about a child, a little child shall lead them. That sometimes, you know, we can learn a great deal from children. There's so much we can learn from them. Brother George Bailey preached a sermon years back. And I know he had four points that he talked about. Four things in which he says that a little child can lead us. That we can learn from them how we need to live. And one of those that really intrigued me the most, though, was the fact that he said that Little children can lead us in regard to faith. Have you ever noticed that about a child, about the faith that they have? Faith they have in mom and dad. Uh, they don't worry about where the next meal is coming from or what, who's going to provide their clothing for them. They just accept the fact that it's going to be there. They have that trust, that confidence in it. And I think any one of us can look back in our own lives with our children and see that type of faith in them. I recall one time, several years back, when we were living in Crossville, Tennessee, and one afternoon I got a phone call announcing to me that one of our members had passed away. And Donna could tell from the tone of the conversation, the way I was acting, that it was bad news. And so when the phone call was finished and I hung up and she asked about it, I told her. I said, Brother Johnson has passed away. We were both saddened by that. But at the same moment, Serge, who was about four years old at that time, threw his arms up and said, Hooray! That means Brother Johnson gets to go to heaven. And I thought, why can't we have faith like that? Why can't we have faith like a little child? Isaiah had prophesied that in God's kingdom, a little child will lead them. You know, as parents, we have a responsibility to our children to lead them to grow up in righteousness. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. But we, may we never forget that we can learn so much from our children and we can be led by them. And one of the ways I think which we can do that, we need to understand is how much we can learn from them about that simple trusting faith that they have. And why don't we have that kind of faith 
Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, Jesus had promised, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Why then do we fret sometimes about things that are happening? As if all of a sudden we're alone and no one's there to help us. When we're told that Christ will be with us. Psalms 84 and verse 11. We're told about God that no good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. Why do we worry and fret then? Saying what shall we eat and what shall we drink and wherewith shall we be clothed? When we have the assurance that God will not withhold anything from those of us who walk uprightly. David said, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Why don't we have that simple trust and confidence and faith in God today? In Romans chapter 4, verse 20 and 21, the Apostle Paul spoke about Abraham and said that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Why don't we have that simple faith, that confidence to trust in God at all times, regardless? To have that kind of faith that would allow us to trust in God to the extent that we'd be willing to repent of our sins, that we'd be willing to confess Christ before men without shame, that we'd be willing to submit ourselves to being immersed in water in the name of Christ, that by His blood we might be cleansed of our sins. And why can't we, if we've done that, in simple trusting faith, simply live the way God wants us to live, faithful to Him, even unto death, even if it means our own death, to live faithful to Him. A little child shall lead them, Isaiah said. He'll lead if we will allow Him. If we will learn from them the simple, basic faith, confidence, and trust that they have in God. Do you have that kind of faith tonight that will lead you to live for God the way you should? Become His child if you are not, or if you're His child and not living faithful to, to return to Him and seek His forgiveness with the full confidence that what God said He will do, that He will forgive and accept us back your subject is invitation tonight, we want to encourage you to respond to it while together we stand and while we sing.